Okay, can people hear me? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get everything sort of sorted here. Let me know if you can hear me, I see y'all in the chat. My only concern is that my audio is going to clip for some reason, so I'd love it if uh, you could let me know if I sound okay. Great, I sound good. Perfect, 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 perfect. Oop. Just getting all my windows sorted over here so I can see the chat. <clears throat> Doing a little warm up here. Get my arm ready. Haven't been awake too long yet. Circles, 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 circles. Little circles. Big circles. Hello, Amy. Where are we at? We got about four minutes. Let's let some folks come in and we can get started. Make sure my notifications are off on my phone. Got some Californians, Washingtonians. I hope everyone's having a good Sunday so far. I think it's Sunday everywhere right now. Pretty sure it is. Anybody that's taking the class, what I'm doing right now is just some basic warm ups to get my arm warmed up and um, just get the feel for everything right now. It's something I, I ask everybody to do at the beginning before they even start drawing. Just fill up a big old page. Circles. Circles and ellipses. <clears throat> San Francisco, Scotland, Virginia, Canada. Wow, this is a, a lot of different people from a lot of different places. Thanks for showing up today. Tracy, hey Kyle, hey Julie. Hey Danielle, hey Dasha. Now oh, we got people from all over the globe. That's so exciting. It's one thing I absolutely love about Sketchy. Like, I don't think I've ever interacted with so many people from all over the world. It's such a cool community. Um, can I give us the name of the reference photo? Uh, yes. I will give you the name of the reference photo right now. It is from the Sketchy app, and I think I've got her in here. I'll just let a, people trickle in a little bit, little bit longer while I find this reference photo name. There she is.
Oh, I'm so sorry, y'all. I have a key binding for my microphone. I need, I need this chat over here. Okay, I'm going to start this one more time. Okay. Welcome. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I am so sorry, y'all. Oh, gosh. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. Uh, welcome to Drawing the Human Head with me. I will not touch the keyboard anymore because of my bad audio key binding. Um, yeah, two things I wanted to say. One, welcome. Uh, this is going to be sort of a, a demo, an overview of maybe what the class is going to be about that, I'm, that I've released um, called Drawing the Human Head with Mike Creighton. Um, we're going to be talking about Drawing the Human Head, just a basic method called um, the Loomis method. And it's for head construction and getting all the features on the face. So we'll be doing that. We go really in depth in the class itself. Um, so we're just going to be doing an overview as best I can uh, in the course of the next hour. And uh, in addition to that, uh, be, this is my first class that I've released on Sketchy, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, Sketchy also has a really great promotion going on right now. It ends today. It is if you buy two or more classes and you use the promo code SAS40, it's Sketchy Art School, SAS40. Four zero, you'll get forty percent off that purchase. So two or more classes. If you haven't signed up for mine, I'd love it if you would. Um, but there's so many other great classes in addition to that. So take advantage of that promotion. It ends today. I'll mention it a couple more times in case people are late. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, no audio now. Seriously, <laughs> or is that just a late comment? Why is streaming so hard? Let me know if there's audio now. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm done warming up here. This is my warm up page. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the actual stream. We hear it. Thank you. Okay, I'm so happy to hear that. Remember, I won't touch my, key my keyboard. Okay. A uh, quick overview of materials that I'm using here in case anybody's wondering. Um, we've got uh, just some newsprint, some smooth newsprint. Uh, we've got a pencil, sharpened like mad, like crazy. Uh, we've got a rubber kneaded eraser, and that's it. That's most of what we use in the class. So you don't need a whole lot to get going. Um, and. Yeah, let's get started. So like I said, we're going to be doing the Loomis method. We've only got about 55 minutes here, so we'll see how far I get with it. I'm going to be using this reference that you see on the left. Um, we don't see her ear or anything like that, but it is a really nice three-quarter view, which is one of the views that we do cover in the class. Um, you saw me warming up at the beginning of this. It's super important that you warm up so that you can just feel out the circles and things like that. Um, what kind of pencil is this? It is a Wolf's Carbon 4B pencil. It's got a really um, hard lead, which is great for, for sharpening. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we do in this method is we draw uh, a circle. I'm going to try to make the marks dark enough so that you can see them. So this is always the first step. This is the um, major mass of the, the cranium. So we start with the circle, and we need to think of it as a sphere. So the first thing that we start to do is we create what's called an equator line. And again, we're going to be going over all of this in the class. Hopefully my frame rate won't drop too often. Sometimes it chugs a little bit here and there. Um, so this is why we warm up, by the way. And you'll see that I don't just draw like one circle. I draw a lot of circles, and then I eventually find a beautiful circle, hopefully, if I'm lucky. So we just found this um, equator line that goes across our sphere. Again, think of this as like a sphere. And what this represents and will represent is the brow bone on our model. 
And so next we're going to find a, sort of a slice on the side of the head, which is an ellipse. And what this represents is, um, yeah, just the side of the skull. I may want to come out a little bit more with that. I think once you see the class, you'll see that I am 100% not against doing some erasing. Uh, I think it's really important to really judge and evaluate your strokes and your marks as you're making them, and it's totally okay to, to erase and try it again um, if it's not right the first time. I think that this is something that you get better at over time um, because you're able to see when things look a little off a little bit easier before it gets too late. So hopefully that's one of the things that um, we will be teaching uh, throughout the class is just this idea that it's okay to make mistakes, but it's really important to notice that you've done it. So this is a sort of a slice off the side of the head as if you were to kind of cut into the sphere and just take a sliver off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a vertical line to kind of give a sense that this is a plane and the orientation of the head. And then from here, what we want to do is we want to find the hairline. And generally speaking, it's going to be somewhere up here. Sometimes what we can do is you can take like a foreshortened 45 degree angle and kind of create something like this. But I know for this particular, in this particular case, I'm going to go a little bit higher. Usually the hairline is actually higher than the hairline that you see. So that's one of our first key measurements. And now, once we've got that measurement, um, we just want to keep that in mind. So what we're, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create the center line of the face. So what that means is we're going to create another ellipse that is sort of this, imag not imaginary, this is like the center line of her face. So if you were to divide the face into halves, this is the center line. Everything is going to hinge off of that sort of crosshair, that intersection. This is sort of some of the most preliminary, most important preliminary work you can kind of do with the Loomis method. Um, now what I want to do is I want to get this measurement and then repeat it a couple of times and I'll show you why in just a second. Oh yeah, can you all hear the pencil? <laughs> so I'm just coming over here so I can get a measurement from the side so I can see. And what I'm doing is I'm putting the tip of the pencil at one end of the measurement and I am using my finger for the next part of the measurement. I'm just going to draw a horizontal line. Let's double check my double check my measurements. Going to do it again. Okay. You all see that? Yeah. I might move the camera upwards just a little bit. You're going to get a little bit of shaky time here, so bear with me. I thought I had this all planned out. There we go. That's better. That's better. Okay. There we go. So now we've got these new landmarks that are evenly spaced. Three segments here. And what these represent is, like I said before, a hairline, brow bone, bottom of the nose, and then the bottom of the chin. Now, everyone doesn't have exactly these proportions, but these are really good um, proportions to think about uh, just as a sort of general average. And now we're also going to draw that center line down the front of the face. And what I mean by that is we're going to continue that line we drew and just drop it down vertically. 
And that gives us the front of our face. I'm gonna take out some of these construction lines. Often I'll go through and just erase as we go in the classes. How difficult is it to provide closed captions? That's a really good question. I think that YouTube's, um, I think that YouTube, doing live closed captions I think would be very hard um, unless you had a closed captions um, person. But I think afterward, YouTube does a pretty good job, fairly good job of auto closed captioning. So after the stream, there should be, there should be uh, some closed captions probably available. All right, so we've got our major landmarks. Hairline, brow line, bottom of the nose, bottom of the chin. And what we wanna do is create what's called like a rhythm line from the side of the side plane, or sorry, <laughs> the side plane, the top of the side plane, all the way down to the chin. And that's kind of like the corner uh, of the head, like where the face starts to turn around the side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. And I'm gonna be going kind of fast for this because like I said, I get really in depth in, in it uh, in, the, um, in the class itself. So a lot of this will be explained, but these are the fundamentals that are just really important to internalize. And then from there, what we wanna do is we wanna take that side plane vertical mark that we made and carry it on down so that it actually becomes a jawline. Everyone's jawline is a little bit different, so I'm kind of just creating an approximation. I'm using the reference right now, the muse, as just a visual reference, not necessarily am I trying to draw her right now. And I don't even know if we're going to get to the point where it looks like her, but I just want to show you how this sort of structure this Loomis method s reflects what you're seeing here and how you can use it to, to create believable, uh, believable features, believable face. Um, okay, so this is, this is the, the foundation upon everything, upon which everything will build, uh, will happen. So what we'll do next is we'll start to actually put the features into um, the face. Before we do that, I might just throw in a neckline here somewhere just to anchor the head. Can't even see the side of her neck, but it's fine. It gives us something. All right. So usually the first place I like to start is um, with the nose because it's such a sort of defining shape and everything sits around it. Um, so. We'll get into all the different details and everything like that once we get into the class itself. So I might be spitting some um, anatomical term terminology out at you. Uh, don't be intimidated by it. I go into a lot of detail in, in when, when it's necessary to use anatomy. The class is not focused on anatomy, but sometimes there are an anatomical concepts that you need to know uh, in order to understand what's happening underneath your skin so that you can understand how the features interact. So the first thing that I want to do, again, this is my brow bone, is, and if you look at her, you can kind of see this start to happen, is we have this thing where the skull kind of comes inward. And I want you just to imagine that that's like dipping in back below the brow bone, underneath it. And that's the glabella. And then we have the nasal bone, which is this hard part right up here where it kind of starts to swoop out again. And then we've got an abstraction. And when I say abstraction, I mean what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be laying in uh, shapes that are the simplest version of what, of what uh, a given feature might be. In this case, for the nose, we're laying in what is effectively like a kind of a like a wide box almost that tapers out at the end. And I'm just looking at her angles. So we've got the top plane of the box, we've got the bottom plane of the box, we've got the side plane of the box happening over here. And we've got something like, like this. 
approximately. Maybe it goes a little bit out more. Um, this is just to give us some sort of reference shape for where the nose might be. Yeah, I said Wolf's Carbon, uh, 4B pencil. Wolf's Carbon. I, it, they're hard to get a hold of. You can usually, I don't want to say usually, but it's hard to find them in art stores, I've found. Um, but we talk about tools in the class, all the different options you have. You definitely don't need to be using this pencil. This is just one that I really, really enjoy using. So I'm just kind of making a minor correction here and looking at this angle of the nose, just doing my best to kind of eyeball, eyeball it. So you'll notice that with this, with this sort of nose abstraction, when I said the bottom of the nose, I literally mean where the bottom of the nose is, like where the septum hits, not the bottom of the ball of your nose. And we'll get into all the different pieces here um, of what the nose is in the class again. So I might throw out some terms, but I don't want you to be afraid of them. We get really in depth with them. It's a, it is a pencil, it's a graphite pencil. It is not charcoal, though you could absolutely be using charcoal. So now we've got the nose um, just roughed in, in place. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna get in here and um, think about the, uh, the eyebrows, the brow bone. And what happens with the brow bone, especially if you look at this muse, um, you can see that the eyebrows, they start sort of at the brow bone and sometimes they, they come up above it. And with her, she's kind of giving a little bit of an expression here. So the far eyebrow mix is sort of, I would say more typically where you'd see um, the brow hitting on most people. And the other one, she's kind of doing the, the rocks people, people's eyebrow. So we'll think about that. But again, the, the brow tends to start somewhere around here on the brow line. And then it comes up above, and in this case curves curves around. So I'm just going to kind of block in a really rough eyebrow here. Really, really rough. Just to kind of show you where the shape of it is. And then for the other side, we're gonna do kind of the same thing. Now, I'm skipping a lot, a lot of detail about how I'm thinking about form as I'm doing this, how I'm thinking about how the eyebrow sort of intersects some of these key landmarks. Um, a lot of that stuff's really covered in depth in the class. But again, this is this line, this rhythm here is where the head starts to kind of turn. So we just start thinking about that and we think about the eyebrow as um, turning along with it. I might go in and mess with that a little bit more. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to start thinking about where do the eyes sit. That's why I draw the eyebrows is so I can get a sense of like where the eyes are going to fit in there. So we come back and we do another measurement. Uh, this is a fun measurement because it builds upon the other ones that we've done. I think a lot of people know or have seen that like, oh, the eyes sit right in the middle of the head. And so now that we've got a proportioned head, we can go ahead and go ahead, get it. Uh, we can go ahead and create a measurement that is halfway between the top and the bottom. And that halfway point usually isn't, isn't actually like the center of the eye, it's a little bit lower where the tear duct is. So let's go ahead and, and try to find the halfway point. So I'm doing the same measurement technique as I did before. In this particular case, it looks like if I were to do these measurements over again, which I cannot do right now because we've gotten too far along, uh, I think I would have reduced the size of this because the head kind of became too long. And that's totally okay. Um, normally I would do a, a lot more rigorous measuring when doing this uh, technique because otherwise I'm just kind of making a guess at how, how much distance there is between any of these given features. 
The interesting thing though about this method is that it still works because as long as the proportions and the relationships of all these measurements kind of work with each other, you'll still get a believable face. Her face is now going to be a little bit long and that's totally okay um, because the features will still sit kind of correctly in relationship to them. I'm going to say, I'm going to move it up a little bit, but I'm going to say that's about halfway. So this is, you could probably stand and move it down a little bit. This is going to be where the tear duct sits. Just move it down a little bit. Let's double check this. We'll see how this goes. We'll see what this ends up looking like, but I think it'll be fine. You can always move features around after we get them there. So that's a little bit of, eh, you can see that, that's fine. So this is where, again, the tear ducts will approximately sit and then her eye will sit a little bit above that. Now, we need to find one more measurement here and that measurement is where does the tear duct actually fall? And if you look at the reference photo, in a normal case, if I was looking straight on at you, my tear duct would fall right at the edge of my nose. This is called the wing of the nose, not the nostril. The nostril is the hole, this is the wing. So if you were to draw a line vertically down my face, you would see that the tear duct intersects approximately right at the edge. And so we're gonna wanna kinda make this nose a little bit more real right now, at least for the edge of the wing so that we can kind of start to see where, where the eye would actually sit. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna fill in a little bit of this, this wing. I might move that down a little bit. Can I just bring the chin up? Uh, well, okay, so what's gonna happen is the bottom of the chin is gonna go like this. Like when I say the bottom of the chin, I mean like literally down here. So it'll come up a little bit, but no, generally speaking, you, you don't want to just kind of like shorten the chin because then everything could get a little off. We might do that. Let's just, we'll see um, once we get more face in here. Uh, but usually what you want to do is if you're going to change some distance, you should, pr you should try to change it equally across all of them, but it all depends on the face. In this particular case, we're just going to stick with um, we're going to stick with what the sort of generic, I would say, version of a, of the Loomis method would look like. Just looking at chat real quick. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and keep keep this moving forward. If we look at, I was saying that like the tear duct to the wing vertical line as we turn that line starts to tilt a little bit because of the shape of our head in the relationship to the nose because our as we come down the face our our mouth our nose kind of this muzzle area starts to protrude so if I were to look at this it's almost vertical but it's not quite so if I were to draw a line from the edge of that nose I'm going to start taking out some of these construction lines again if I were to draw a line here, this is likely going to be where the tear duct starts. Maybe a little less steep. I'm going to try not to be too perfect here. When you see me doing the demos and some of the final lessons of the class, you'll see how, how much I kind of like really look and try to see um, what these angles are. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side and just imagine, imagine that we can see the other side of the other wing. And then we'll see that the tear duct kind of arrives up here, which if you look at the reference photo, it, it sits right behind, right behind the, the bridge of the nose. And so let's go ahead and we're just gonna draw the eye. Uh, I go into a lot of detail about this in the class, obviously, but we're gonna do our best just to, to kind of shape in an eye here. 
And I'm going to stylize it a little bit just for sake of time. I'm not going to try to get it perfect. But if there's one thing you'll notice here that I'm doing is I'm not making just like an almond shape. I'm trying to be mindful of the potential subtle plane shifts that happen here. And like I said, in the class we get really in depth on this concept. And then I'm also thinking about the eyelid and how it has a bottom plane. This is a lot easier to do when you're not just doing linear drawing, but most of, most of the class is really focused on linear drawing because I think that learning how to place the features and understanding the features without light is so important and that otherwise you're not really understanding the forms if you can't draw them without a lighting situation being applied. What kind of paper? This is just smooth, smooth newsprint. Cheap paper. <laughs> Cheap paper because we're just doing studies. Most of the classes, it's all of the classes just studies. So we want to make sure that we're not wasting good, good art supplies. So we just use, use the cheapest stuff we can get. This is going to look really weird. This is the only reason why I don't like doing linear drawing is because when you're doing stuff that's, this isn't very big, so um, it starts to look kind of weird when you're trying to create planes, small, small planes. So we've got this eye. That may be a little wide. It's a little hard to tell because I can't really see with her hair swooping. No, it's probably fine. So I was just doing a measurement there to see how wide this eye was compared to how wide the next eye should be. This eye might actually be able to go a little bit wider, to be honest with you, but it's really hard to tell. But usually the space between this eye to this eye to the width of the next eye, this eye to the middle to the width is when you're looking straight at somebody, it's equidistant. But when we turn our head because of foreshortening, it should be like this eye is a certain width, and then we get a little bit more narrow here, and then this one gets even more narrow because it's turning away. So we see less of it, and we see more of this. So um, it's just something I'm trying to, trying to think about when I'm doing this measurement. So we're going to tuck it in here so that the eye starts behind. And one thing I also want to do is I want to make sure I create another horizontal line, really light one here, just to make sure that the eye doesn't go up or higher, uh, too much higher. Uh, I do not speak Spanish, Santi. Um, I wanted to make sure it doesn't go up higher because one of the things that gets really weird about faces is when if you're not keeping things sort of like parallel to one another or like symmetrical to one another, that's when features start to kind of drift away <laughs> and you start seeing eyes that go like this or mouths that are kind of off to the a weird side. So it's really important to understand uh, the sort of relationship and symmetries that exist and make sure that, you know, certain like parallel lines that things don't go and drift above, um, except for this eyebrow because again, she's doing this. So anyway, just kind of creating that mark there for myself. Again, we're not, in this particular demo, we're not trying to make it her, which may sound like a cop-out, but um, it's really just about the method right now. Just thinking right now in my head about how eyelids move around the eye, how they sit on top of the eye, and how the eye is a dimensional sphere. Uh, 
uh, in three quarter view, isn't the closer eye often a bit higher? Uh, can be, but not really. Um, everything, unless there's like a super wide angle lens that is um, looking at the individual, you shouldn't you shouldn't see too much difference in terms of height due to foreshortening on that on the sort of the vertical angle if that makes sense like if i move like this i'm not so far away from you that this part of my face starts to get that much taller and recede into the background that makes sense like if it were and that's just that's perspective so there might be a subtle difference but it's i don't think it's one that's really worth worrying about however if somebody takes a photo of themselves with a camera or i'm sorry their phone you're going to see that kind of distortion. You will definitely see that kind of distortion. So um, I usually, when I'm drawing from photos, I have to undistort, if that makes sense, uh, because of that exact, exact thing. OK, so we've got basic shape of our eye. Uh, where are we at with time? 934. All right, let's go ahead and get through to the nose really quick. So I'm going to erase again some of these construction lines. We're just slowly moving down the face. And we're going to think about, in the lesson that I'd go over, we're going to think about like the, the minor planes of the nose. But I'm thinking about the ball of the nose. I'm thinking about the upper lateral cartilage and how it folds into the ball of the nose, which is the lower lateral cartilage. I'm thinking about the wings of the nose. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this back down a little bit more. And let's think about the septum, how the septum curves inward. We'll think about the nostril and how it's over here. And then the wing also curves inward. And then we'll think about where the wing sits. Make that nostril a little, or that wing a little bit bigger. And we're gonna bring the nostril up and out a little bit more. So sometimes, um, oftentimes, what am I talking about? Sometimes, oftentimes when I'm drawing, I will intentionally look away. Lucky for me, I've got um, a computer over here that's got a camera that's looking straight down at my drawing, so I can, I can kind of step back and get another view of it. But I think it's um, super duper important to, to look away often so that you're not kind of like your eyes get used to a thing and you want to make sure that you don't let that happen because um, things can get away from you and I'm guilty of it all the time um, so like just now I was looking at chat and reading chat um, and I came back and then I saw something that I needed to change and I just did it again so I'm just gonna keep trusting uh, what I'm seeing with my eyes Anyway, so the septum hits and then kind of comes up. And we're not making it exactly, again, like her nose. I'm just trying to illustrate this, this idea of where, where the nose will hit. So that's the bottom of the nose that, hits that, that hit that line. And we see just like the tiniest bit of the far nostril here.
So from there, what we can do is erase some of this stuff. <laughs> what we can do is um, we can do the mouth now, find the mouth placement. And this one's really e uh, pretty easy because what it is is it's dividing this area between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the chin into thirds. So again, we're going to do another little measurement exercise here. It's actually pretty good already. Yep. So I'm just finding that measurement that is approximately a third of the way down, doing it again, just kind of fixing my eye on the place where I saw my fingernail and doing it again. And so what we've got now is we've got where the two lips meet, again, approximately, and then where the bottom or where the top of the chin starts. So another thing that's happening here is a tooth cylinder, and that is when you know you have teeth in your mouth. So mm, my skull is elsewhere, but if you have a skull and you look at it from the side, you can see how the, the mouth, the tooth cylinder, the muzzle protrudes. And so we want to take that into account. This is the center line of the head. However, it's actually going to kind of protrude out a little bit when we think about where the center of the mouth, visually, the lips, will be. So let's go ahead and start to try to do that. I'm going to start with the center of the top lip. And I've got some abstractions that I like to use in, uh, in this kind of, um, when I'm thinking about the lips. And you'll hear me say abstractions and all kinds of other terms, and, and we'll get into that in the class. But um, we can think of the lips as just kind of being segmented into a certain number of, of um, big shapes. That kind of rest upon one another and cover up one another. Again, this is one of those cases where much like the eyes where doing this kind of like linear drawing can start to make some of these features look weird because we don't have outlines around our lips. But all we're trying to do is really just understand how the forms interact with each other, like what they actually are. And can the question is, can we make them look dimensional even just using line? And then once you understand that, then you can start to understand how light plays off of those forms. Erase this a couple more times. This is a really good question. So Amy asks, uh, do I ever draw in pen? If so, do you still use measurement lines, work them into the drawing? So if I am drawing in pen, and if you've seen my Instagram, you'll, you'll have seen that I have recently been doing a couple of pen sketches again. Um, and, and usually what I'll do is I'll start off with a really light, if I want something that's accurate-ish, I'll start off with a really light um, H, maybe HB pencil, uh, just to, to block in. Very similar, I mean, just using this technique. And then I'll do the ink and then I'll erase. I don't often use like, um, ball, like Ballpoint or like Biro, Bic, all of those brands. I don't often use those brands, so the ink doesn't end up smearing or smudging when I erase, which is nice. I use a lot of like brush pens and technical pens. Anyway, so yes, I do, I do use that. Um, I do do an underdrawing. I don't do it with the ink though. Hopefully that answers that question. Andy says, uh, he likes to take photos as he goes along to check for errors. That is a really good technique to do. Um, looking at the drawing indirectly always highlights things that change. Yeah, absolutely. When you're this close to the drawing, it's just like, this is what I'm seeing. When I'm this close to the drawing, it's so much easier. So as soon as you start to scale it down, you can see the things that um, are sort of wrong, which is really, a really, really, really smart practice. One that I need to do more often, because too often do I finish a drawing and I'm all ready to post it to social media, and then, um, and then I discover there's something I need to change. 
which is super fun to discover. Yeah, we can tell that her head's too long. So some of our measurements right, right at the beginning were off, but that's fine. We're just going to keep trucking along here. So I did try to figure out where the edge of the mouth was, which is usually just inside the, um, the tear duct. And if she were looking straight at us um, from straight ahead, it would be the inside of the iris. It would be a kind of a straight line down. This is actually an interesting character. This is one of the, the neat things about this method is you can just use it. You can use a, a real reference model to figure out like where things want to look or expressions or whatever. And then you can use this method to kind of distort or change um, a model. So we, we can't see her ear here, but I know it's going to sit somewhere between the bottom of the, the nose and the, the brow line. Um, and we also know that it's going to come off at an angle. So I'm just going to put an ear in here because I can. Just to get something in here that helps me know that there is an ear here. And then I'm also going to try to start filling in the rest of her face. Now this, this initial circle that existed is not necessarily going to be the true edge of the head. Usually what we'll see is the brow come in and then we'll see it kind of go up into a forehead. So you don't get this sort of like super globe shaped uh, thing happening. You hope that my drawings are much darker or the class will be something you cannot watch effectively. I mean, to be frank, like this is about as dark or as much contrast as I can get. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to erase my lines. Um, sometimes they're a little bit more well lit. This particular lighting scenario, because I've got outside light and inside light, it's a little bit harder for me to get it uh, to work correctly. But um, we'll never go like that full, full high contrast black and white. But I've done my best to, to, to create as much contrast as I can with um with the videos just so you know but it'll be it's more it's more contrast than this i'll say that much but it's it's really hard to do these kinds of drawings without a ton of erasing so it's really difficult to to just um, draw really dark the entire time in fact i'm i'm drawing darker than i normally would Um, speaking of classes, I just want to say for anybody that wasn't here earlier that Sketchy is doing a promotion right now for um, buy two or more classes and you can get 40% off, which is a lot of percent off. Uh, so I, I highly recommend if you're interested in either doing this class or one of the other excellent classes that exists on Sketchy um, that you take advantage of the promo. And it's a, a promo code SAS. Four zero, that's S A S four zero. Um, use that at checkout, and uh, yeah, you'll get forty percent off two or more classes. Promo ends today, so it's really important to take advantage of it if you want to do it. So I'm just erasing some of my construction lines here. It's really interesting. So it looked really long. Now I'm like, oh, it's this is probably just fine. <laughs> it's. All of those construction lines, once you start to erase them and you start to um, kind of firm up everything, you'll realize that most of, most of the marks that you made, most of the landmarks and everything, as long as you stick to that method, were correct. Uh, I'm always kind of surprised at it, but sometimes you'll be off. Like I can see that I would probably want to make 
her mouth a little bit bigger, just a little bit, and then maybe extend it out a little bit more over here. Just gonna check on this uh, angle over here. Probably take it in a little bit more. So it's something like that. Okay, and now we can start to erase a lot of this stuff. One thing I want to do is try to get some hair in here. So we'll do that in just a second. I'm gonna leave that hairline up there just to give myself a reference. And this is why in the class I really recommend you, you um, use really inexpensive media like paper and such because this is all just practice. It's all study. We're not making any really finished drawings or anything in the class. Um, what we're doing is we're building a foundation so that we can make good drawings and good paintings in the future. Um, not to say that you know if you don't use this method you're not making good work, um, but I'm, I'm just speaking specifically to like believable accuracy. She really changed, Amy, yeah, she really changed from looking masculine to feminine. Absolutely. Um, yeah, a lot of that has to do with the jaw, the contours, etc. Like all the proportions are generally the same between um, different genders. But it's, it's really just like the um, yeah, just how, how some of these features line up with one another. And it didn't help that I had this like really slender looking <laughs> line. Um, so you'll, you're going to notice that I'm just going to go in and create an ear from imagination. This is something that you will be able to do also as soon as you get to the ear lesson in my class. And the reason why is because the anatomy of the ear is consistent from person to person. It's just the, uh, the general like, sh like how the little shapes interlock with each other are what change. And so I can pretty confidently draw an ear now without looking at an ear because I know all of those things. And that's one of the things I want to say about the class is that it's really important to commit all of this to memory. Like I've committed all of this to memory. And in doing that, I can understand when I look at something, how those forms in my head, um, I can see the forms better that I'm looking at and I can understand how they move in space better uh, because I've committed them to memory. So yeah, there's an ear. Sometimes this helix kind of comes in <clears throat> a little bit. So let's see. Yes, I can mention right now. Uh, Sheila asks, um, can I mention why at the end I prefer Wolf's Carbon over others? Um, I prefer it because of the width of the pencil. There's also another pencil called Conte. Um, it's a Pierre Noir. Pierre Noir <laughs> B. It's a thicker pencil. Both of these have really, really hard leads, which makes it possible to sharpen, um, sharpen as much as I, I'm able to here. So that's the real reason. You can, it's hard to do this with graphite because the the lead will will break more easily. Although it's totally possible to do it. Here's one with here's a graphite pencil. Here's a charcoal pencil. Like it's possible to do it with all of them. It's just these pencils hold up a little bit better. So I'm going to rough in some hair here, and as I'm doing it, I'm just thinking about these big forms, and I'm thinking about how the hair how the hair sits on top of the head. I don't get into the hair in the class because hair is, in my mind, not a feature of the face, but um, I do demo drawing hair a little bit, just in like a gestural way. So you'll get a sense of how how I kind of like finish up the head with with hair. Um, 
and a lot of it's just a lot of like fluid mark making and just looking at the overarching shape. Um, anyway, what I was saying was, uh, again, I want to call out the promo code for the sketchy classes. Um, the promo code is SAS40. Today is the last day to use it, and you will, if you purchase two or more classes, get 40% off. Um, I'm going to be purchasing a couple myself. There are just there's too many classes on there that I want to get into. Um, so many great artists. So just highly recommend uh, checking it out. If, you're not, if you haven't purchased my class yet, maybe maybe purchase it <laughs> and. Uh, and sign up and, and grab another class as well. There's some really, really amazing stuff. So this ear is invisible. Uh, I just want you to see the ear. Where are we at? 954? All right, I did manage to get through an entire face. So uh, not perfect. I can, I'm looking over at the small version right now. I could definitely take this down. I'm just kind of roughing, roughing this in, not going for accuracy, but something like that. Probably take this in a little bit more. Missing some comments here. Um, Cindy, that's great. I'm glad you found this to be easier. How do I sharpen the pencil so thin? Razor blade. I could do a 15 minute video on just how to sharpen your pencil. Um, Amy asks, how does this intense study also use your right brain? It seems so brainy, mathematical. Can an artist be loose and still rely on this technique? I'm opposite and wonder if it would benefit me. That's a really good question. So I'm right-handed uh, and I'm a very rational, analytical person. Um, this is just, it's a, it's a scaffolding. You can then take this and turn it into literally anything you want to. Um, and so really the the most important part of this is don't be locked into this method but rather understand that this method is is there to help you understand the dimensionality the relationships between forms things like that so um it's it's not meant to be sort of like a prison that holds you into a specific rigid, rigid space rather it's just a way of helping you understand how to how to bring even in an expressive portrait um the right relationships between features Uh, Margaret Bailey asks, do I have other classes on Sketchy? No, um, but I would like to continue part continue partnering with Sketchy to um, bring new classes to life. So if you have ideas and you're in this class, uh, in the class that I'm releasing, I would love it if you told me those ideas of things that you wanted to see or would want to see, um, because I think that it would be really great to make some more stuff. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up so that Dylan can get on and make his live stream. Dylan, uh, <clears throat> Dylan, Sarah is gonna be uh, doing a live stream uh, also on the Sketchy channel uh, in a different event, a different video. So uh, definitely go check that out. Dylan, you should post a link to your your video. Um, that way you can uh, that way you can get people to come over there and watch you do some amazing ink work. Um, just taking a look at the last comments. Thank you, Margaret, I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this was a little rushed, a little quick, but I hope you can see how the Loomis method works overall. Um, we'll be getting into it in depth in my class, and I'm talking like nine hours of just doing this kind of stuff. Uh, so I take it really slow, I get into all the details um, from all the different angles. So hopefully that'll be super helpful. Uh, in the interim, I gotta sign off here and um, Really appreciate you watching today and coming by. The class does get released this afternoon, I think, in just like a couple of hours. So um, looking forward to seeing you on there. Uh, ask questions. Tell me what you're looking to learn. Tell me what you're hoping to get better at. I really want to hear that stuff. And maybe we can kind of tailor some of these following live streams to, to address some of the things that you're, you're looking, uh, looking to get better at or want more clarity on. So just want to say thank you again for checking me out, checking this out. I should probably do this thing and say hi and bye 
And uh, I'm going to take a really quick look at the chat really quick. OK, great. Sketchy just posted a thing. Um, and that's it. I hope you're all looking forward to it. I'm really happy to, that you're, you st stopped by. And um, yeah, looking forward to seeing you in the class. So I'll stop here. Thank you. And hopefully, I'll see you 